Welcome to another episode of the GCB. My name's Salvatore, and again, today, we are without Emmanuel. He will be back next week, so don't worry. We're at Everwilling Health and Fitness in Castle Hill, again, for an awesome leg routine. I hope you guys enjoy it, designed by me. Then we've got an awesome car, then we've also got an awesome burger joint. Let's get this workout done, review that car, and then go eat a burger. Hope you enjoyed that workout guys for more information on that please shoot me a message on instagram or email me i'm more than happy to answer any questions you have or even just comment below guys uh, let's go check out the car and then check out the burger joint the car is over there All right guys, today's car is a blue Kia Stinger 2019 GT. And you know what, what a car. I, I've been driving this car nearly all day and I can't complain about it. It's really surprised me and I, I can't wait to tell you about it and maybe possibly buy one. All right, so quickly, we'll talk about exterior first and then we'll talk about stats and everything else. You guys know what goes on in this video, so just keep watching, we'll go through it all. So the front end, I do like it, however, these vents on the bonnet are fake. I don't know why car makers keep doing it. There's no need. It's just, it's just stupid. Stop, please stop, okay? Then, the front end, you've got LED front headlamps, which are really nice. They come standard on this car, which a lot of things do, which is ridiculous. The vents down the side here are actually real. They actually feed air in here, around the wheel, down the side of the car for better aerodynamics. You've got this E-badge on the car, just quickly. The E-badge on the car is, uh, performance division of Kia, I'm pretty sure. That's what the owner was telling me. A lot of people will rebadge the car and take off the key badges and stick this on. So you'll see that around the whole car. Um, but yeah, the front end is really nice. I can't complain about it at all. Oh, and check out this key. Just have a go at that. For a car that's worth 70 grand off the lot with seven years warranty, to get a key like that in the car, what it comes with is ridiculous. Wait till you see what this car comes with and you're gonna be very surprised, trust me on that. But anyways, let's go on the specs about the car. Let's do that now. All right guys, engine, a 3.3 liter V6 turbo, churning out 272 kilowatts and 510 newton meters of torque, sending all that power to the rear wheels by eight speed ZF transmission. Oh, and it has a limited slip differential. And it does north to 100 in 4.9 seconds which is pretty crazy for a car like this that weighs around about 1,700 kilos. That is pretty good. Now, quickly, I wanna cover a couple of things. 
you would be looking at this car because we have in Australia, so sorry for all the international people, we have lost our pride and joy, the V8 Commodore and the V8 XR8. Okay, so we've lost those in Australia. So this car fits that segment in the market around 70K. This is what fits there. And you know what? It's a car that should deserve to be there because it's a phenomenal car to drive and it's just a crazy car what comes standard on this. It's, it's just great. So I'll talk about that later on in the video, but just keep that in mind for everyone in Australia. If you're looking for a car around this mark, around 70K, it's a great car for the value that it is. Oh, and another thing. The guy who had the say in what this car has and how it was designed, his name was Albert Bimmer, Bimmerman. Bimmer, Bimmerman. Bimmerman. He was the vice president of BMW M division. So it clearly shows in the interior, exterior, and the way this car drives. But let's head to the side and look at what brakes it comes with, tires and wheels and everything else. All right guys, side profile of this car. And it looks good again. So every angle of this car is pretty damn good. I don't have any complaints except for on this side angle, I'm gonna say this. The center caps are fake, which I don't like, which is a bit tacky. And that stupid reflector that comes on the side there. I really do not like that. I think it's ugly and I think why? Like we don't use those in Australia. Um, and even if we do, they shouldn't be. That's, that's disgusting. Besides that, Let's talk about specs of the wheels. So we've got 19 inch at the rear, 19 at the front. We've got four piston Brembo's at the front and we've got a single, uh, two, sorry, two pistons at the rear. You've also got 225 Michelin Pilot Sports at the front and 255 Michelin Pilot Sports at the rear. Then, as I explained at the start of the video, the vent at the front sends air across the front of the wheel through this vent here that's actually real flowing down the side of the car for better aerodynamics. And also, the under the trail of the car is almost completely flat for better aero as well. Let's head to the rear and get a load of the noise this car makes and also to check out some more fakery. Let's do that. All right, Jake. So, it's another complaint about the car. But again, I will say this, it's not gonna deter me from buying this car in the first place the exhaust note. You can hear that it's trying to be loud, but it's been stopped by all the emissions stuff that every modern car has these days, which is quite sad. So if I did buy one of these, I would put a high flow cat in it and take out the resonator so you could get that really strong V6 turbo note. But it's not gonna deter me, deter me sorry, from buying this car. However, let's look at the rear. Okay, so the car is almost a hatchback. It's got just to let you know, I'll open it up. Hatchback style boot. The space in the back isn't too bad, but I will say this, it's not as spacey as your European counterparts. Uh, it still can fit a lot, don't get me wrong. Uh, the annoying thing is the parcel shelf cannot be stored away under the boot, which most cars you can these days, so you have to leave that at home. But again, it's not that bad. There's a scuff plate here, so you don't ruin your paint. Um, but it can fit most of your day-to-day -day things that you would store in the car anyways. And it's electrical tailgate, no matter what you buy, come standard. Um, so let's talk about the rear end, guys. So that's practicality done. Okay, so, got this boot spoiler, which is aftermarket, which adds a little bit more oomph to the rear end. I actually think I quite like it, this little carbon lip. Uh, I love the lights, how they go right across. That's really nice. I also like the rear it's completely designed altogether. The only thing I have complaints about, again, is that these exhaust pipes are fake, they're part of the bumper bar, and there's fake vents on the side here, and that's about it. But besides that, it's, again, it's still a very aggressive looking car and a very nice car to look at. So I can't really complain about the rear end besides the little things and the exhaust. But yeah, let's go check out the interior. All right, so guys, we're in the interior of the Kia Stinger. Now, quickly, just before I go into everything about the interior, this is the range topping GT 3.3 liter V6 turbo as I've already explained, and this is where it's gonna blow your mind. I want you to comment below what comes as an optional extra on this car, all right? I'll wait, I'll wait, and then I'll tell you. Okay, you just commented, guessed. The only optional extra on this car is the bimodal exhaust. 
which this car comes with because the owner has bought it. Everything else is standard. Now let me name it from the beginning. So we'll go from the top. So we've got heated seats for the passenger and for the driver, heated steering wheel, rear view camera, parking assistance, which is you got sensors at the front and rear, 360 cameras all around. Okay, your electronic handbrake, yeah, it comes standard on any car, so I don't know why I've mentioned that, it's a bit silly. Uh, <laughs> driver modes, which in the driver modes you've got eco, smart, comfort, and sport. Okay, so that's just here. Then you've got wireless charging, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, okay. Then you've also got a head-up display, okay. Lane keeping assist, lane departure. You've also got electronic tailgate, Harman Kardon sound system, electronic um, adjustment in the steering in the steering wheel. You've you've got so much in this car for the price that it is. It's 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 actually mind blowing. So that is a big win for me. Number one already. Things that really make me a bit upset is the quality aspect of the car. Okay. So where the European counterparts will be a higher quality. Okay. This is where this car lacks with the quality in some certain areas. Not all, just some. Like for example. The middle console has a lot of flex, which you're not going to do that. No one's going to get in your car and go, oh my God, it's got flex. So yeah, I get that. Don't hate me in the comments for that. But yeah, there is a bit of flex in the, in the column. You've got a bit of scratchy materials down here. You've got scratchy on the middle of the steering wheel, which is disappointing. I wish they finished that off in leather. It wouldn't have been that hard. And then you've got scratchy down on the door panels. But again, you only see that if you look for it. Where you look all the time is actually nice. Like the dash is soft touch. The middle of the dash is soft touch. You've got aluminium buttons where it's quick menu options for your infotainment. You've got like a little bit of like an aluminium finish on your dual climate system and aluminium in the middle of the car. Like, and you've got leather here on your armrest, a beautiful leather steering wheel with a flat bottom. You've got paddles that are not badly finished. Okay. And then you've got these aluminium finishes on your doors where you're window switches are where your handles are and now this brings me on to this this car has a lot of similarities to its other cars that are in the european sector that reminds me of something which i want you to guess that reminds me of something and the door panel here with the aluminium finish with the speakers reminds me of another car brand now, it's not the worst thing in the world at all. This car is trying to be of high quality, which it is. It's not terrible, okay? And, okay, it's, it's fitting for this car because it suits it really, really well. What I will say is that this car has really surprised me because in the same segment where this car fits in the market, you have the old SS Commodore and the XR8, and then you have the Chrysler 300 SRT. I will say this, that I would prefer this car over those cars, even though they're V8s, just due to the reason that in this car, I feel like I'm di driving a driver's car, a high quality car, okay? The, the parts that are used in this are a lot more of a higher quality compared to those cars. Like the finish is a lot better. It's like the Alcantara roof lining, which is really nice. The leather on the doors, which you define with the stitching, with a soft touch on the doors. It's just a lot more high quality t compared to those other cars. Also, the seats, the seats you actually feel like you're being hugged no matter what size you are. You get into the Chrysler and the, and the Commodore and the XR8 and you feel like you're sitting in, honestly, a lounge. They're so big and ridiculous that they think that people are like enormous, which is just absurd. This car feels a lot more sportier, more driver focused, and the way it drives is a lot more driver focused as well. But um, yeah, I can't really complain too much about the interior, guys. I love these seats, by the way. The seats are really nice, if I haven't mentioned that already. They're really, really nice seats. But yeah, the interior is good. It's, it's obviously not on par with the Europeans, but it's quite close. It's very close. And for the price that you pay for this car, you know, 70 and below, you, you can't match it. It's, it's pretty good. But let's get in the back, because we want to talk about the practicality in the back, because if you're going to buy this car, you're buying it because... You're buying it for you when you take take it out on you know maybe track days or maybe you're going to take it out to a nice drive with mates. But you're also going to take your kids with you when you go to the school run, do school runs, go do go to the shops or go play uh, sports on the weekends, and then also take your wife out on the weekends to a nice place or your partner wherever you go. And if this car suits that scenario, so let's get in the back, test out practicality for the back. 
Okay, so now we're in the back, okay? Uh, I'm not so tall, so I'm only five foot nine and a half, right? And I've got plenty of headroom, right? But when I lean back, I can tell with this sloping roof line, it does cut into headroom. Now you can see with Jake, his head's touching the ceiling, okay? So you can tell if you're over five foot 10 and you're in the six foot range, you're gonna find it hard in the back here, okay? So you're gonna be sitting forward most of the time, okay? Uh, leg room is good, can't complain about that where your feet sit under the passenger seat is where it lacks. You, you don't have much room there. Uh, that's, that's disappointing. Uh, but for me as a passenger in the back, it's not too bad. For Jake, on the other hand, what do you think? It's not good. It's not, it's not good. So there's the bit of a complaint in the back. If you have a small family, right, and you're just starting off, this is a great car. I think that if you're an adult, you're gonna find it a bit hard to sit in the back. But at the end of the day, it couldn't be the worst thing in the world. The RS3 we reviewed last week was worse than this um, for practicality in the back. But yeah, besides that, it's not too bad, but it's not the best thing in the world. You, I think there's more room in your uh, BMWs and your Mercedes in terms of headroom. Because, however, however, because there is no sloping roof line. This has a sloping roof line, which then cuts into headspace. So I will say that. You've got your vents at the back here, which again, mimic another car brand, which we, we've already said. Um, and you've got your 12 volt socket and you also got a USB charger port. So not bad for kids in the back here. There's plenty of room for a kid and the windows go all the way down. So not bad at all. All right guys, so let's drive. Sport mode, seats are now hugging me, which is kind of cool. That reminds me of a certain car brand, I'm not going to say which one, um, because everyone's going to think I'm biased like all the time. Um, let's drive. So, 0 to 104.9 seconds and it really shows. Car's very flavorful, very, and it's got a very good note to it. Um, most of that comes through the speakers, which a lot of car makers are doing these days, which I don't like, but it actually sounds really good. The way the car handles, it's very driver focused. It's got a lot of play with the handling. It's got a limited slip differential, which really shows in the corners. It allows for playful slides, which you can control, and it allows for a better driving experience all around. I can't complain about how this car is making me feel right now. If you're honestly thinking about a cheap, practical, high performance saloon, I honestly can't think of a car on the market that can beat this at its price range and what it comes with standard. Just doing a UI. Legal. Just gonna put it in comfort mode quick, quickly because I want to tr test comfort mode to see what happens. Okay, so the seat opens up now. The car becomes a bit more refined, okay? It's not as aggressive. Test out the turning circle. Not bad, not bad at all. And yes, so the car's a lot more nicer to drive, not so aggressive when it's in comfort mode. I will say that the steering's not so much different to when it was in sport mode, which is quite disappointing. I wish it was heavier in the sport mode. But um, yeah, it's, you can tell the suspension has softened, so you're not feeling so many bumps. So the dampers are doing their job. And yeah, it's a nice car to drive now. It's subtle, it's not too aggressive. Um, but yeah, the cornering's nice. You don't feel like you're in a boat, even though the car weighs 1,700 kilos. The, its competitors like the Chrysler SRT and the, the old Commodore SS and the XR8 felt more boatier in the corners. This honestly feels like a car. It doesn't feel like a boat on land. Um, but there's nothing else to complain about. Like, honestly, I really like this car. And yeah, that's, that's my verdict. All right, we finished with the Kia Stinger today. Quick note before we go on to the burger joint, I just want to talk about the car itself and what I thought about it. When I first came to doing this review today, I was like, oh, it's a Kia because I was being a brand snob, okay? But after driving it, after experiencing the car, I've actually changed my mind, okay? This car really is like Zara, the clothing brand, okay? in the way that Zara takes things from all the expensive brands and makes it cheaper for people that can't afford that brand, but give you the high quality feeling of the high brands. 
and that's what this car does. Even though this car is cheap, it doesn't cheap out on performance, quality, and the way it makes you feel as a driver. It's priced at around about $70,000 Australian and under, depending on what you, you know, choose, etc. Like if you go for the 3.3 or the two liter turbo, the four cylinder, which I wouldn't go for, please do not go for that. Go for the 3.3 V6, it's very, very good. Um, yeah, or you get a second hand one for about 50,000, right? 50,000, and then even if it's two years old, you still have five years warranty because the car comes with seven years warranty, which is nuts. It's a great car. Um, so that's my final verdict on the Kia Stinger. I would suggest if you're looking for a cheap saloon that does everything that a high performance saloon will do, go look at one. You will not be disappointed. What you will be disappointed to know is that they're stopping production. After the new updated shape comes out, Kia Stinger will no longer exist. And on that note, it's sad, it's disappointing, and I don't know what next is for our hyper saloons that are gonna be reasonably valued. Alright guys, I hope you liked the episode this week. We had that killer leg workout and the Kia Stinger and we just finished some good burgers, well excellent burgers at Suzy Dukes here in North Rocks in the hills. I had the halloumi burger which was phenomenal, about a 9 out of 10. Jake had the chicken burger, what do you think? I'm fat. <laughs> I think he rates that one out 9 out of 10. Guys, as always, like, subscribe to the video, comment below and we'll see you next week for another episode of the GCB.